interim head coach Nick Cushing. Um, and we'll go first to Roberto, please. Nick, uh, congratulations on uh, on getting the job right now. It, it's an interim um, job as, a, as has been described. Does that affect in any way uh, how you go about your job uh, going forward? And uh, also what, what kind of little tweaks are, can we expect for you uh, to make on the team as uh, you take over? And congratulations. Thank you, appreciate it, thank you. Um, I think in a period of change, obviously we are, we are in mid-season, I think in, in a period of change, you have to think short term and um, it's not ideal to change, but you know we have a game in six days and we, we have to think short term and in settling down all the team. We're in a really good place. And uh, you know I think for us, it's about making sure that this team is prepared this week for the Colorado game. And, you know, I understand the questions will come around wanting the job and the way that I approach the job. You know, I, I've worked within the group for, for a long time and, and I understand that it's a, it's a huge privilege to lead the team. And for me, it, that starts this week with Colorado. Okay, we'll go to Chris Campbell next, please. Hey, Nick. Um... With taking over the role and, and with the departure of Ifrain as well, um, are you looking going to be looking to fill additional assistant coach positions, and, and if so, from where? Um, and then I guess uh, if you had an equivalent to the uh, to the Ronnie Roar, what would that be? <laughs> uh, you know, I think you know we're massively thankful to Ronnie and to Ifrain for all of the work that they did, and and working with both of them was you know I, I really enjoyed working with both of them. And, I think the thing for us is, like I say, it, it, we have to think short term and we have to make sure that we prepare the team well this week. And I, I'm really, really fortunate to have two guys alongside me in Rob Bartugian and, and Medi Bellucci, and they have extended their stay as well. And, you know, we're really happy about that. And, and between us and, and, and the, the good staff that we have, I'm really fortunate in, with, to have, like Dave said, you know, really, really good people around us. And I think we have to make sure that we review and we've spent this period over the last two days in, in discussing and reviewing roles and where we might have little openings of things that Ronnie and things that Ephraim did. And, you know, we're more than confident that, that we've got enough and for sure enough knowledge and experience to make sure that we continue the consistency and performance and the consistency and approach to how we, how we go into games. Um, the Ronnie Raw, um, I don't think I'll be doing the Ronnie Raw. I think for me, it's about just making sure that I'm, I'm myself. Like I say, you know, I've worked, I'm fortunate to have been here now since 2006 within the group and worked across various roles in Manchester and came here in 2020 um, as the assistant coach. And now in this period, I'm going to step up as the head coach. And, you know, I'm really excited and I just can't wait to get, you know, get the games going. Okay, we'll go to Jake Nissy next, please. Hey, Nick, uh, congratulations. It's a bit of an interesting one for you just because, um, you know, obviously you've been, ste you've, you step into this role now. It's not as if, you know, Ronnie was dismissed. The team is, is doing quite well. And uh, obviously as an MLS defending champion, how, how then is that push pull for you kind of, um, you know, the kind of the balance between you putting your own fingerprints on this team and just, you know, maintaining maybe some of what Ronnie was doing, which obviously was working quite well already. Yeah, I think naturally when coaches leave and coaching positions change externally, I think there is a lot of change and there is a lot of differences because coaches come with different ideas and they come from different places and, and, and they want to, you know, they want to use their own philosophy and they want to use their own methods of, of preparing the team. I think here naturally because I'm an internal candidate and I like I say you know I've been here a long time and I'm really fortunate I've been developed within the organization from a young coach to where I am now we, we have a, a shared philosophy that goes across all of our teams across CFG so I think it's a natural progression for me personally I think it's a, a natural almost a natural change but I don't see too many changes because you know we, we all share the same the same way that we see the game and, and we have a shared methodology. So, I, you know, I don't think it's as aggressive as, as a, an external change in this moment. Thank you. Okay, we'll go with Christian Smith, please. 
Uh, hi, Nick. Uh, you come very, very highly recommended. David sung your praises quite uh, thoroughly. So uh, he also mentioned that, you know, when it comes to uh, NYCFC, the decisions, um, you know, like the responsibilities have been delegated quite evenly amongst the staff in the sporting department. Um, so if David were to take you into his office um, right now and say, what do you think this team needs, like now that you're in charge, what, what do you think those needs would be? And also, how do you continue this amazing run that the team's been on since winning the MLS Cup? I think the team needs consistency. I think if you look at our, you know, our league position reflects the performances and, and the way that we've prepared the team. It, it, it is reflective of the consistency that we've had. And that goes the same as in delegating roles. You know, we have a fantastic coaching team. I've already said, you know, the fact that Rob Artugian and Mehdi Bellucci have, have renewed their contracts gives us consistency. We have a really good sports science and performance team in back of house. So, you know, for us, it's about just making sure that the team is continuing to work hard. I think the one thing that, that we have here that I, I'm going to be a real beneficiary of is we have a team that has a real high work ethic and you can see that in the games and it's no different every day in training. We've trained today and the training sessions have been at the same level, the same intensity, which is ultimately what we need to go into every day to continue to prepare the team to make sure that come Sunday we're ready and we're ready to perform. And, you know, myself, the coaching team and all of the staff are really excited for the Colorado game. The first half of the season was you know, we're really pleased with and we want to continue to push the team and improve it. OK, we'll go with uh, Juan Carlos, please. Hi, Coach. Uh, thank you for the time. Congratulations. And a little bit along those lines, uh, I know Ronnie kind of usually used to say that uh, they prepare like each game as, as they go. But uh, given that you have, you know, the game on the weekend and then three days after you have a derby game, how do you, in this case, prepare, you know, like having the responsibility of managing the, the team? So like unexpectedly, like, do you change that perspective or do you uh, keep it the same? Thanks. Um, I, I think one of the positives is I've done this role previously. And although I've been an assistant coach for the last three years, three seasons, previous to that, I was a head coach for seven years. And so I'm comfortable in this role. I, I understand how the role is slightly different in, in responsibility and decision-making and how you have to approach the role. Um, but I think one thing that we have done really well over the last three years is we've built a solid process with this team. And not only do we have a solid working process, we have a team that has a real high work ethic. And when you have those two things, I think this change can be a little bit smoother and and actually we can get the consistency with the team and I think you know coming off the training pitch today you know I was really pleased with the way that the training session went and of course there will be some slight changes and some small little things because every coach has their ideas but you know I, I, I continue to, to reiterate that when we hire coaches in this organization it's because they share the same philosophy that that our organization has and, and that was no different with Ronnie that he was hired because he saw the game the same way that our methodology and our philosophy is. I'm no different. So I don't think you'll see so many big changes. I think you'll see a team that is prepared to go into the game and, and continue the performance level that we've had. OK, we'll go Ryan Jabosi, please. And Nick, you've discussed this, this kind of uh, your history with City Football Group um, and over the last few years, bringing in these coaches that have this shared mindset. But is there something specific that Ronnie brought in that maybe was not standard for how you guys operated in the past that now you will continue even, in that, even though he's gone? I don't think there's, there's anything specifically that I could say this was one thing that he brought that was um, the thing that was revolutionary to this team being different to every other team that we have. Um, of course, Ronnie brought many things to this organization, to our team that added to us becoming MLS champions. Um, I learned a lot from him and, and my relationship with him um, was a very strong one and, and, and was across all of the coaching teams. But, you know, I think like, so, you know, for us, everybody in this building has, has added and has contributed to the success that we had last year and that we continue to have this year at this point sitting 
in the league position that we are. So, you know, we can keep the consistency. We have we have an incredible group of players and we have an incredible group of staff. And I think, although we're disappointed that Ronnie and Efrain have moved on, you know, I think it's now opportunity for myself and for other people here to continue to develop and continue to improve the team. OK, we'll go with Michael Andra next, please. Uh, Nick, uh, congratulations on getting the job. And uh, I, I guess, um, you know, you had mentioned the need for uh, filling in some gaps. Uh, David Lee had mentioned the same thing. I'm curious, with your role being currently tagged interim, have you thought about how much influence you're going to have as far as picking those assistants to, uh, to fill those gaps? And do you think it's going to be, uh, uh, do you look at it as a sign of a, uh, of how well you're doing based on how much influence you have over that choice? No, I think naturally being a head coach, whether it's interim or permanent in this moment, the responsibility is to prepare the staff and prepare the team. And, you know, whether it is interim or permanent doesn't change how much work I do today or tomorrow. Um, my job is to make sure that this team is prepared for Sunday. And of course there are, some gaps now that two members of staff have left, but that also gives opportunity for other people to step up and to, to have more responsibility and to, to develop their own skill sets and their capabilities. And I'm not worried about that. We have a lot of really good people here that can, that can do more and add more and continue us improving. Um, I have some really strong relationships here, whether it be you know with David, with Brad, or with the senior leadership team across CFG. So, we will have consistent communication. I have done through Ronnie, through all of our staff here, and, and we will continue to do that across this interim period. For me, it has always been the team is the most important. And for me, it's about making sure that that team is prepared for Sunday. And then after Sunday, we'll look towards the Open Cup game on Wednesday. But, you know, it's just about making sure that every day we continue to prepare the team and continue to prepare the players so that they are ready for the next game. And Ultimately, we want to win the next game. OK, we'll go with Tom Bogut next, please. Thanks, Sam. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Nick. Um, you know, given your stature and success and, and reputation with the Manchester City women's before you took this job as an assistant, what, what, were, the, what were the talks with Dave in the front office about, you know, the vision for you and, and your plan? Was this kind of a goal of yours was this kind of part of the development plan that one day you'd at least get a chance as, as the manager of the first team here at NYCFC? No, I, I don't think it was as specific as that. You know, I, I didn't come here as the assistant coach to be the, the first team coach, the head coach one day. Um, I had a really successful period at Manchester City Women's, of course, and that was because of the organisation and the help and the support and the knowledge of all of the people around me. But I think ultimately I went into that job as a 29-year-old as a um, after being at the academy for nine seasons. And that was the natural progression to go into the women's team as a head coach. And the nature of being a head coach is it's so fast-paced. There's a lot of decisions to make. There's a lot of games. And when you're successful, you don't really get much time to continue your own personal development because your focus is preparing the team and your focus is continuing continually trying to improve your staff and your players so this was the natural progression for me to become an assistant coach to work with an experienced coach like Ronnie to work with uh, a team in a different league with a different culture and I thoroughly enjoyed you know being an assistant coach and was continuing to develop and learn learning up until this point and you no know, I'm, I'm comfortable I'm confident in stepping up into the head coach's role and like I say, we will have those consistent conversations and we will consistently communicate like we have been over the last three days. And I think it comes back full circle to the team is the most important. The club is the most important part of this decision making process. And whatever the decisions are in the future, they will be for the team and they will be for New York City Football Club. And whatever that be, I have full trust in the likes of David, of Brad and of the senior leadership team at CFG. And you know, I think that is because I will be part of those communications. So moving forward, I continue to say it's short term. It's about making sure that we prepare the team for Colorado. And that's where my mind is. Thank you. OK, Glenn Crooks. Hey, Nick. Uh, congrats. 
So uh, we know there's the process and smooth transition and things like that. But when you walked out to the pitch for your very first training session as the head coach of this club, can you just run through your emotions a little bit? You're human. And um, also maybe anything you can tell us that you might have shared with the players. It's an unusual transition for some of them and some of them might, might even be a little disappointed. But uh, could you go through that a little bit? Um. I think, of course, excitement, you know, being given the opportunity to lead this team, it breeds huge excitement in me. And that is because I am hugely proud to work for CFG and to lead a team in CFG. It's, it's a huge honour. And I thank all of David and Brad and the senior leadership team here for having faith in me and, and also having um, the enthusiasm and the energy to continue to develop myself. Um, I, I'm, I'm hugely thankful of that. But I think the excitement comes from looking at the playing group. You know, who wouldn't want to work with this playing group and have the opportunity to lead and continue to develop and continue to improve and deliver results, not only for this playing group, but for the fans of, of our football club. You know, they're an incredible group of fans. And I, I just can't wait. I, I was excited to do the first session, but I'm extremely excited to do the first game. I, I can't wait to to lead the team out and you know it will be a proud day for me um yeah of course you know moving forward i think we've got just got to continue to deliver results uh christian hennage please hi coach congratulations on the interim uh role just looking forward to the game for a second against colorado what challenges do you think they'll present for the team uh, i think the, the one thing that I've learned being in this league is it's, it's an incredibly consistent league. Every team will give you different challenges. And, you know, we just got to make sure that we prepare the team for Colorado. We know they play a unique system and we'll be prepared for that. We've played it across different teams, Montreal and, and Vancouver. And I think for us, one thing we do is, is we focus on ourselves. And we know that if we continue to do the things that we've done on and off the pitch consistently this season. We'll give ourselves the best chance of delivering positive results. And this is a period of change, but at the same time, if, if we if we continue consistency in the way that we work, we give ourselves the best chance to deliver a, a positive result. Okay, we'll do final two questions here. We'll go to Jake uh, Nissi first. Um, Nick, it's obviously clear that you had a good relationship with Ronnie and, uh, you know, it was someone that you learned a lot from. I'm just curious if you've had, you know, any conversations with him since, uh, you know, his move was made official and if there's been any sort of uh, words of encouragement that he's offered you now that you've stepped into the interim role. Yeah, of course, we've, we've had conversations, you know, across the last few days, you know, we're disappointed that he's moved on, but he has his own personal reasons for, for wanting to move back to Europe. And, of course, he gave me, you know, his support and and his advice and he's somebody that you know I thoroughly enjoyed working with him and we'll continue to have a relationship with him in the future because you know when you work together for for two and a half seasons and and you win MLS Cup you have that success of course you know that's something that you've shared that is really special so you know I wish him all the best in his role and you know he did the same for me in this period and you know now we move on and we continue to prepare the team and like I say you know we're fully focused on Colorado now. Okay, we'll go to Joe Tollison last, please. Uh, Nick, congratulations. And uh, I, I guess for you, as you prepare here, um, a lot of times you talk to players and you talk about it's a little different relationship with the head coach and the assistant coach, and you have, kind of have to cross that bridge now. Um, how's it gone so far, and how do you look to manage that? Of course, it's a different relationship because there's a lot more decision-making involved when you're the head coach and you have to pick a team and you have to – you know, try and navigate players through play. And our schedule is is a difficult schedule because we have open court, because we have Campione's Cup, because we have, you know, league games coming thick and fast. So I think for me, it's just about consistently communicating with players so that they know where they need to improve, when they're going to play, why maybe they're not playing. And I think the one thing that I have working for me is it's an incredible group of players. It's a really hard working group of players. They're really hungry to improve individually. They're really hungry to continue the success as a team. And, you know, I think, I think the one thing I will draw on is that I've done this role previously. And I think when I was successful previously, it was because of that communication and because, you know, maybe in the difficult periods or in the good times, you have to just remain consistent. And 
the team comes first and we have that here in our culture that's why we have been successful and we'll, we'll continue that and it, it, maybe it's a change of face in the head coaching role but you know we'll we'll continue with the culture that has gave us results consistently